It is about five o'clock here on a chilly, cold Sunday winter morning, and you know if it's at the break of dawn, it's gotta be a brisket. So getting set up this morning, here is our beautiful brisket that we had already trimmed. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be injecting with some beef broth, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the rub that I'm using on the outside and put a little bit of that into the injection, mix it around and get some of that flavor in deeper. So here we go, we're gonna inject about every inch or so, uh, just a little bit, get it really throughout the flat a lot, a little bit in the point as well. Afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and grab some paper towels and we're gonna dab any excess that you know didn't make it into the brisket. And then here comes our rub. Again, we're using something that we got down from the city market. I know a lot of people are really strict with the just salt and pepper, but this isn't Texas style, this is JP style and I love a good rub. So in the time that we rubbed and injected our brisket, our coals are nice and ready and fire hot. We're gonna go ahead and throw those on at the front of our snake. Each coal is gonna activate the next coal and then thereafter, which is why the snake method gives you a really long, consistent burn. And then we're gonna wait for this to come up to temp. As you can see here, we are about 200 degrees. The goal for today is 225 to 250, but this brisket is gonna take a long time. We've already got our hickory on, so I'm gonna throw the brisket on right now. As you can see, the wood burns a little bit hotter than the charcoal, so our temps are coming up. Brisket is on now at 5.30 and we're ready to rock. All right, so now that the brisket is on, we've got a good steady temp, we've got a good stream of clean smoke rolling through. Let's go back and take a look at what I had to do yesterday to get this brisket ready for the smoker today. All right, so first things first with this brisket prep. Unfortunately, my smoker just can't accommodate this size of brisket. So I am gonna have to chop off a decent amount of this front piece, which is always disappointing. But don't worry, it's not going to waste. I can use it with lots of other recipes, stew, meat, grind it into burgers, etc. So now we're gonna take a look at the fat side of this before we dive in with our plan of action. Here's the deckle, which is a really thick, hard piece of fat that's not gonna render, so we're gonna have to take that out. I usually wanna keep about a quarter inch around with the, with the flat, which actually doesn't look too bad here. It's a pretty thick flat too, which should help. But we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning up top. So here I'm just taking a lot of these bigger pieces of fat from the fat cap, kind of cleaning it up, shape, shaping it up a little bit, trying to make it as, as pretty as possible and, and not taking too much of the fat. All right, go ahead and flip it over, take a little bit of the silver skin off, take a little bit of fat off of this side. I do typically cook my briskets fat side down, so not as concerned with this side, but still wanting to make sure we take off any excess. So here's our finished product looking at it. Looks like we have about a quarter inch of fat on the flat, looking great there. And on the non-fat cap side, got about as much of it as I can. And now it's ready to be uh, rubbed and injected. So what we're gonna be doing with this brisket, we're smoking it over hickory wood chunks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to a point where it's got a great outer bark on the outside. We're gonna probe for internal temp. I know a lot of people say you have to wrap it 160, 165. I really focus on how it looks outside. If I'm not getting the bark I want, I'll leave it on longer, maybe crank the temp up a little bit. But if the bark looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it, make sure it gets really nice and tender on the inside. All the while, we're gonna intermittently spritz with a mixture of apple juice and apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna leave the hood uh, closed for about two hours before I even take a look at it. You know, if you're opening it too much, you're gonna continue to lose your heat, lose your smoke, and you're not gonna get really great bark and really great smoke flavor on it if you continue to open it. So we're gonna let it be for a little bit. Smoker temp has stabilized right where I want it to be between 225 and 250. Sitting right at 226, we're getting a really nice, Great stream of clean smoke rolling through, looking great so far. All right, we are just about two hours into this cook. This is gonna be the first time that we kind of take a peek at what we're working with with our brisket so far. We're gonna give it a spritz. Oh yeah, that is looking really, really nice. You know, it's not super dry yet, so I actually think I may hold off on spritzing it for now. I might just give it one or two. And you let it back in there for another hour or so before I check on it again, but we're looking really, really good right now. Just threw on another piece of hickory, so the temp is coming up a little bit. As I mentioned, the wood does burn hotter than the charcoal, so this can happen. And certainly with a bullet type smoker like this, you're gonna have fluctuations in temperature. Just very important to maintain that fire and make sure you're adjusting your vents as necessary. Take a look at the smoke we have here. It is almost invisible, but you can kind of see it. That's exactly what you're looking for. 
Another thing with these smokers and using the snake method, you're going to have to rotate your smoker every so often. So now, as you can see here, we have the wood that we were just looking at now on the other side. And what I want to show you here is we still have plenty of unused coals with this snake method. So should have no problem with another two hours or so before we have to reload. We are just at about the three hour mark now looking great. You see the color is getting a little bit darker than we had it before. Really starting to dry out a little bit. So definitely going to spritz it this time. We're getting some great char a little bit on that bottom make sure you're watching it to make sure it's not too charred that's why we spritz make sure it doesn't dry out too much but so far looking great all right so quick update here we are at about the just after the four hour mark about four hours and 15 minutes you see our temps are kind of the lower range of what we're looking for so definitely we'll look at our fire but let's see what we got under the hood looking absolutely beautiful maybe a little bit more color on this one side than the other got to keep in mind that is the smaller end of the brisket so definitely going to rotate that make sure that we're not uh, getting too charred or too much color on that one side and cook it evenly this is also going to be a great time to look at our fire as you can see you know the, the, our snake that we started with is coming towards the end we had started it all the way over here and it kind of ashed out and cooked all the way through and now we're coming towards the end of it now we certainly have enough coals left for about 30 to 45 minutes maybe an hour but we want to get ahead of it so we're going to add on and elongate our snake at this time and after we do that this is what we're left with looks great going to give us another several hours of a really good clean continuous and consistent burn with good temps as you can see our wood there our hickory is is flaming up really good producing some great smoke for us and at the same time i am going to add just a few lit coals since our temps were on the lower side of what we were going for just going to add these towards the beginning of the snake where that wood is keep things going really nicely at a consistent temp and after our modifications, our ads, here's our new set of coals with our new snake that we're forming. Gonna give us another several hours of a great burn and smoke. So we are about six hours now into this smoke and check out our temperature. This Brinkman is holding really, really, really steady where we want it. Snake method has been a great way, low maintenance. I've really only checked on it like once every 30 or 45 minutes and then of course to spritz. But you know, I have my foil here ready to go because I have a feeling it's gonna be about time to wrap. And after six hours, oh my goodness, look at that color. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks like the perfect bark. The seasoning is all set in, nothing's coming off. Really nice, solid bark. It's definitely time to wrap at this point. So here you can see I'm probing it and we're getting about 145, 146, but like I said, it doesn't have to be a certain temperature. It's whenever you're happy with the bark on the outside. So our brisket is wrapped. Make sure you're being careful. Make sure you're using proper equipment, gloves, or you know some sort of oven guard uh, when you're taking off your meat. We're gonna wrap it up. It's going right back on the smoker. You know, I'm probably not gonna mess with it for the next couple hours just because I know it's got a long way to go, but we're gonna probe it in a little bit and see how far we've come. Now for the next several hours after I wrap the brisket, put it back on the smoker, not a whole lot of excitement. I did extend the snake one more time with our charcoal to keep things running and I added one more little bed of lit charcoals. Otherwise, I just kind of came back after three hours, four hours, five hours, probed it, knew that it obviously wasn't done. We're looking for about 200 to 202 on temperature and we wanna make sure that when we're probing, it's really, really tender and it slides through like melted butter. So with that, didn't wanna film things that I've already shown you guys just so that I don't bore you and fear of being redundant. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit until we're ready to take it off the smoker. And after about 16 hours, here is our beautiful brisket still wrapped. As you can see, we have it resting on this tray. Juices are pouring out of it. We went ahead and added more snake charcoal because it really stalled out at 155 for about three hours. But now we are probing it right up around 200 in that flat portion. The point is kind of coming in right now at about 203. Perfect, the tenderness is there. It's going in and out just like butter. So the next step here obviously is to rest it. We have it wrapped in a towel. We're gonna put it in this cooler. We're gonna make sure it's wrapped nice and tightly. Go ahead and shut the cooler. This is gonna maintain a lot of that heat. It's gonna allow the meat to reabsorb a lot of those juices so that when we slice into it, we don't lose any of that flavor or juice. So we're gonna check back in about an hour and get it sliced up. After just over an hour, the time has finally come. I'm grabbing the brisket out of the cooler. This towel was still very, very warm, steaming hot that foil was. So we're gonna go ahead and take that, place that on a cutting surface and get ready to slice. Here we are opening it up. You can see we still have a great color on that. Taking a closer look here, still have some of that great bark. I will admit some of the spots are softer probably because I used foil and not butcher paper. So here is our first slice. We're going in 
forgive me for my slicing. As you can see here, I am slicing it upside down. And as you'll see going forward, I'm not the best cutter, but you can see here, juicy as anything. A beautiful slice passes the bend test, passes the pull test, as we can see right here, comes apart really easy. Just a closer look here at one of our slices, really tender, really juicy. And of course the first taste test, absolutely delicious. Now we're gonna take some off of the point. Check out one of these end pieces here. So we're gonna cut ourselves a little burnt end. Big fan of those. Gonna definitely cut some more of those burnt ends up. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm gonna be posting a lot more barbecue videos. Get one last crock section of our beautiful brisket. And now I gotta find some people to share it with.